Dr. Deborah Davis. Good morning. I'm speaking to you today on behalf of some of my colleagues at the Hebrew University um, who share with me these concerns. And as someone who once sat where you're all sitting as a member of the Scientific Advisory Board for the NTP uh, several years ago, I want to comment on the fact that this is an unprecedented review you are part of. I don't know of a single other compound in the history of this program that has been subject to a three-day review. <clears throat> and I don't think it's because the science is debatable. I want to congratulate the team members here on doing an excellent job, particularly in explaining to those who may not be familiar with it how blinded pathology does work and why we proceed in the way that we do. I want to add that the comments provided about the international standards are noteworthy. I would point out that the home of the World Health Organization, the home of arguably some of the best technology ever developed here, Switzerland, is also the place with the lowest standards in the world today. Um, this is a um, very important study that you've done, but I also would add it's not a lifetime study. It's a study that ends at two years. And what we know about lifetime, and I see many of us are now well beyond our 60s or looking forward to moving forward, is that in fact 60% of all cancer in humans occurs after the age of 60. And your animal studies effectively end at the equivalent of a rodent age of 60. So as a consequence, we have to take very seriously what you have produced here. Um, now, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the fact that it's really important that you stick with the controls in this study and not historical controls because of the unique housing, again, developed by uh, talented engineers, and that the baseline rate of cardiac schwannoma, even in historical controls, is quite low, as your own data suggests from Greg Dinsey, who was one of my co-authors many years ago. And I think you need to re-examine some of the endpoints on reproductive uh, and birth weight, because of course the birth weight impact is not just an impact on the pups, but I suggest it was interfering with lactation, of course, in the dams, which is why you have the birth weight, the continuation problem of low weight of when the animals are still in, in uh, nursing. Um, <clears throat> now, we see DNA damage, a multi-site and multi-site increased cancers. While they may not be statistically significant, I think sometimes we confuse statistical significance and biological importance. And I believe that that may be part of what's happened in the very conservative write-up that we have before us. I would point out, as others have indicated, that cardiomyopathy, Schwann cell hyperplasia, and cardiac malignancies should be, in fact, combined for statistical significance. And that if you look, excuse me, at realistic exposure scenarios, such as those we are experiencing in this room today, there are many of you that have in your pocket, on your body, a device that says, by the way, that it should be kept at least five millimeters away from the body. And you are all exposed to chemicals by virtue of being alive every day. And if we look finally at some trends in cancers, you will see some increases. The Ramazzini study that we talked about yesterday is now online. It is available. This is the report of the final results looking at the brain and heart tumors in the Sprague Dolly rats, which I would stress are the same animals here that have been, that have been studied. Again, this is a lifetime study. And the, the analysis of the levels you see here indicated this is the Ramazzini levels over there on the far left. They are not visible in this current scale. This is what NTP exposed the animals to. This is the FCC public limits. This is ICNRP. And here you have the occupational limits, which you can see are many times higher. And the French test at 10 grams SAR. You will hear from Dr. Arazi later today that when French government tested phones over uh, nine out of ten phones failed to meet the current standards and in fact exceeded the standards tested with a 10 gram volume if you translate that into the US equivalent this is how much radiation you are getting from your phones today you are getting between five to twelve times more radiation than the government limits when phones are tested next to the body as opposed to the way they are tested by the government's test limits today now, this is just one table from Falcioni. I know we won't have time to go over it in detail, but I want to indicate to you, you see here the controls, and you see hyperplasia, endocardial, intramural, and schwannomas. But if you combine, this is now groups two, three, and four, and if you combine the data on hyperplasia with the schwannomas, 
you find a statistically significant increase with schwannomas. It's not just the high dose group. And we argue, of course, that you want to combine this. Um, I actually visited the NovoCure laboratories and I found not only, it's not a new technology, it's been developing since 2000. There are over 900 clinical centers that are now using it. It is considered by the Society of Neuro-Oncology as a state-of-the-art treatment for brain cancer today because of the fact that tumor-treating fields can and will kill glioblastoma cells. What we see here in the results from the NTP is if you combine the data on heart, brain, and together, and you look at what uh, Falcioni has done, you see that there is a combined effect, uh, elevation of significant in male and female rats combined. And I think we have to make the analysis where you're not just looking at the schwannoma alone, but at the hyperplasias. And just to go back, if you look at the hyperplasia and the endocardial and intramural schwannomas combined, you get a much more robust numbers. Now, uh, uh, the non-statistically significant dose-dependent increase is shown in the Falciona data. And in a period over 20 years, historical control animals have had very few cases. But again, I stress that in both of these studies, it's important to use not the historical controls, but the controls in those studies. The conclusions of the Ramazzini study is that there are significant increases in the same types of tumors that near-field exposures of the NTP found with these far-field exposures from the Ramazzini studies. Of course, you will need more time to look at that, and we can't go into detail, but I think it's worthwhile to note that reproductive endpoints which were not seen in the study in terms of statistical significance of the NTP, actually do <clears throat> receive the highest dose. This is a simulation using the, some of the technology developed by ITIS with our colleague uh, Claudio Fernandez, and you will see that the highest exposure when a phone is in the pocket to a male occurs in the gonadal zone, the testis. And this was a study done of just of a laptop without heat showing the increase in damage into DNA and DNA fragmentation of the mitochondria of the sperm and sperm fragmentation. I, of course, these slides will be available for your closer inspection. These are studies that my colleagues and I have done at Turkey, where I'm also on the faculty of Ana Kuzmayuz University, showing a reactive oxygen species in liver, kidney, hypothalamus, and testis. Again, statistically significant damage evident with these exposures. These are studies, again, on endocrine functions in uterine oxidative stress in four generations of rats, which you all know doesn't take that long to get four generations. And just 60 minutes a day, five times a week, results in a significant suppression of pro prolactin, progesterone, and estrogen, and increased oxidative stress. So what we have are non-monotonic reductions. This is now the NTP. I've taken data from table H2 in the current draft. And you will see here that in that draft, there's epididymal spermatozoal measurements. And I believe that, uh, and I would like to talk to the statisticians about why they didn't apply a Williams test to these data, because I believe there is a statistically significant reduction in spermatid and spermatozoa in the NTP study. And again, you can't be all things to all people, when we know that, but I would urge you to reanalyze those data in your study. These are data just developed yesterday showing pituitary cancers in the Central Brain Tumor Registry of the United States. These are rates, excuse me, in the United States of one of the only national registries that we have of brain tumors of all types. And you see here a very real increase, and this is the age-adjusted rate of pituitary cancers as reported by CB Trust, which gets its data from the CDC. I think it would be a mistake to take anything other than this is a trend that should not be ignored, but it is consistent with what the NTP has also observed, which is an increase in these same cancers. Uh, finally, I leave you this to look at uh, YouTube as you will see that the 5G, which is this new technology, which is in fact weaker in power for the way it will be used in phones, is being used for non-lethal weapons, and there's entire websites of the Department of Defense explaining this use. Um, and I think I will stop at this point, but leave you with this. 
The breast cancers that we referred to are multifocal primary tumors. We have four cases age 21 so far. This means multifocal, different primaries, all occurring under where the antennas of the phone were stored. Now, this is not a statistically significant study. It's not an epidemiologic study. It's a case series report. That's all we have. These four 21-year-olds have no family history, negative for BRCA, there is no known risk factor, and they all have multifocal primary tumors. Their physicians have contacted me because of our concern and interest in this. And what, in the meantime, what we are doing, I'm not making this up. You can get this at Toys R Us. It's a teething rattle case for an iPhone. There are over 10,000 apps for infants and toddlers so that your baby can play with the phone and the apps. Now, children can learn to swipe before they can learn to talk or sit up or eat, right? These devices don't have to be tested for safety. And it says on the box, protect your phone from the baby. That's what it says. I think that the results of the study here suggest we need to do a better job on things like this. And I wish this was something that I made up as a prop, but I assure you that it's not. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, any questions for Dr. Davis from the panel? And if any of you pathologists would like to help in this analysis of the brain, uh, the breast cancer cases that we have, I would be delighted. Because we're looking for a, whether we can find a pathomagnonic signature that might be useful here. Because they're so unusual in the presentation. Thank you. Niels? I, I assume that you're aware, aware that the slide you showed about the exposure is mixing oranges uh, that you yes. compare whole body versus spatial peak, and if you compare it fairly, the NTP study would be conservative with respect to the exposure. It, uh, thank you for that point. I absolutely agree with you. Yes, the NTP is conservative for exposure, and you'll see from the next presentation why it is the case, because the French have a national agency which actually tests phones. And thanks to the work of the, my courageous colleague, Dr. Marc Arazi, a physician who has traveled here all the way from Paris, you will see that what the French have shown is that when you test phones, if I may take a moment, the just, way phones just are one, tested... We're way over time. So. I understand, but I think it's important for the panel to understand this. The way phones are tested today, they're tested in a holster away from the body. Now, nobody here besides somebody age 70 uses their phone in a holster anymore. I plead guilty to sometimes doing that. But that's how phones are tested, with a spacer that can be as much as a, as a centimeter or more off the body. And the same thing for the, for the head. There's something called the pinna. We call it the ear. And the pinna can be between 5 to 15 millimeters away from the brain. And it is allowed to receive the same radiation as the foot or the hand. Figure that one out. That's why in that drawing I leave you of my beautiful little granddaughter, I should point to her ear having the amount of radiation as a foot or a hand. So we have, we would agree, Niels, you have to come up with a better system of testing because the one you first invented almost 20 years ago or so is out of date because it's measuring the way phones are not used. And what the French will show you is when you measure phones next to the body, you're absolutely right. Thank you for that clarification, Niels. The NTP is conservative in the amount of exposure that it gave. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We will move on.